invite you to stand if you would for reading the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down to untie. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Invite you to be seen. Join me in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we begin this morning, as we begin this message, we come, each of us, with all kinds of stuff on our minds and in our hearts. We're thinking about uh, the day ahead and things that we have to do, and we're wondering about Christmas preparations wondering about friends and relatives, and all these thoughts that we have. Lord, would you please guide us by your Spirit today, that we might clear our minds of these things and listen to your word and hear what it has to say for us. We thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Well, you can tell a lot about a story by the way it begins. The beginning is really important, right? Because the beginning is what captures your attention and then either draws you in or you grab the remote and you move on to the other channel, right? Well, there are many favorite Christmas films, and we've had this discussion in confirmation class and others about what's your favorite, and you can go down quite a list of them. And most of the movies that have been our favorite over the years are ones that we have seen time and time again. Uh, Stephanie, uh, my wife, her favorite is, without a doubt, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. She sees it on the channel selector and it's, oh! Mine is, oh. And guess what? Um, but those movies have impact on us because they're part of the tradition. They're part of uh, what we've done over the years. And mine in particular, and last night it was on uh, once again, but then the odds of it being on are almost every night. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful life. Uh, Brad Capra's and Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed in it. It's a classic. Black and white, if you could imagine such a crazy thing in our day and age. The beginning makes a difference. And as I was watching it again last night, uh, the beginning really does make a difference. Because this movie, and the way Capra does it, is that the whole thing unfolds about two-thirds of the way through the movie before you get to what's really going to happen. you got the whole telling of his story and all of that. But if you watch the very, very beginning, it's interesting, I thought it was fascinating, that the movie begins with prayer. It's the prayers of the family and friends of George Bailey. Prayers that are coming up from uh, Bedford Falls up into heaven and are heard by the angels there. And because there are so many of them, they're praying for uh, uh, George Bailey that they have to do something about it. You know, of course, what they do is they, they send an angel down to be George Bailey's guardian angel, Clarence. And he's an angel what? 
second class. He doesn't have his wings yet. The beginning of this movie, you see, is so important because it sets everything up. And then the whole story begins to unfold with George Bailey's history and all that he's done in his life. And then the tension and the drama that's taking place right there where they're short at the savings and loan and then all the things that are about to happen. That beginning either captures your imagination and draws you in or it doesn't. And I think in Capra and in the film, uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It does a beautiful job of grabbing you right by the heart and bringing you in. The beginning of a story tells you a lot about it, and a good beginning is so important, isn't it? Well, today we start a new beginning, uh, if you will, and it's in the Gospel of Mark. Now, if you look in your Bibles, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You've got the four, gospel, four Gospels, right? Uh, and with that, if you think about each and each one of those, the order that they're in isn't necessarily the order in which they were written, okay? So Mark is the shortest of all the Gospels. It's the, the briefest of all the Gospels. Not only that, but it's also thought to be the earliest of all the Gospels. So Mark is really important for us, isn't it? You see, Mark's beginning that you heard read today is that the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's almost a title the way it is. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So here it is. Here's the, here's the story about to unfold. Now, all of you good Christians, you folks who have been raised in the church and you have Christmas traditions, when you start to thinking about the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, what do you think of right away? You think of the angel announcing to Mary that she's going to have a child that will be named Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Not only that, but Joseph and uh, Mary, they kind of hold it together long enough to get down to Bethlehem. And they, they have this, she's going to have this baby, and there in Bethlehem is no room in the end. Isn't that what we say? And so we have a manger scene, and we have cows and sheep and animals around them, and the shepherds come, and the angels uh, sing to them, and they got that whole story that unfolds. A great beginning, isn't it? It grabs your attention, and you all know it by heart. Mark doesn't even bother with it. Isn't that something? Mark says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ is this, that the prophecy of Isaiah will be fulfilled. Now I'm going to read that prophecy to you again. You've heard it twice now. I will send him my messenger ahead of you, ahead of the Messiah, who will prepare your way. This person will prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. He will be a voice calling out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make the path straight for him. You see, in John the Baptist, this is now fulfilled in preparation for Jesus coming as an adult. Isn't that something? Two different stories. Matthew and Luke have the birth narrative in different forms, and Mark and John are totally different, but Mark has this brief just introduction, and he just gets to it, and the first character that you meet aren't lovely angels or shepherds or anything like that. The first character that you meet is this guy wearing camel's hair. Anyone know what camel's hair is? Real rough. It's uh, scratchy as all get out. It's not exactly what you want to put on for a nice sleeping uh, pajamas you know, or something like that. This is rough. And then a leather belt and a delicious diet. Locusts and honey. Tasty. You could have that instead of cake. <laughs> so eat that. <laughs> well, see, partly the reason John is out there is to fulfill this prophecy, but it is also, it is also to be a prophet of what is about to happen. So you have two different beginnings. Now, confirmation this last week was was uh, kind of uh, fun, but also a little challenging because 
we read through Luke uh, chapter 2, and we talked about all the different uh, nuances of the birth narrative of Jesus, and then we took a quiz. And the quiz asked a bunch of different questions, and what we found out is that a lot of what we have as our understanding of the Christmas story, the birth narrative, if you um, is, is a little just maybe maybe more some assumptions, okay? Uh, just for instance, how do we know that they stayed in a barn or a stable? Anybody? Well, the Bible says so, Pastor. Well, it actually doesn't. It doesn't say a barn or a stable. It only says you'll find him in a manger. So we assume that most mangers are going to be in a stable. Now, the other question was, well, what animals were present at Jesus' birth? Well, it doesn't really say any animals were present, only that we assume that there would be animals in a stable or and so our story, although it doesn't have all the details in it, is very different between here, John the Baptist, and then the birth narrative of Jesus. And we have these two side by side, holding together with God's word. Isn't that amazing? Well, here's the difference for me today. John comes, and he has a message of repentance. He's preaching to everyone, repent of your sins. And when he does that, people repent of their sins and they are baptized and washed clean in the River Jordan. Part of the preparation all of us have in the Advent season as we prepare for Jesus coming to be here is to remember how it is that we have not lived up to God's uh, law and God's love for us. And that how it is that we too need to repent and how it is we need to be made clean. The word is metanoia in the scriptures. Uh, it, it is not only to repent, but literally to turn our lives around and to turn away from our sin and head towards God, towards back towards the love that He has for us. And so part of our preparation is not in cookie baking and decorating the tree and uh, singing our Christmas carols and all those things, which of course are, are things we love to do. But part of our preparation is to say we're sorry, Lord, for the life that we the things we have done wrong, and we ask for your forgiveness. And guess what? <coughs> Jesus is the one who comes. He doesn't just give us water in baptism. He gives us water and the Holy Spirit. So with Magnolia today and all of those who have been baptized, we have that gift of forgiveness that comes simply in our asking. Jesus' name, eh? Amen. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing. <coughs> 